All right, everyone. Uh, we are going to complete our uh, take of operators and they're overloading it by continuing what we have done last time. You're going to need all these to be able to do workshop five. So I'm going to um, kind of complete the, the concept. If the concept is completed and we are good, then what I'm going to do is, where did I create this? My apologies. Give me a second. So we talked about operators and they're overloading it. We said operators are nothing but functions. We, we had some examples of uh, um, operator overload. And uh, then we analyzed what operators actually look like when we are dealing with them. What is their signature and how do they look like? We said we have binary operators, which are essentially um, operations with two arguments at left and right. The left argument, we call it left operand. The right argument, we call it right operand. And these kind of operators, we call them binary operators, operators who work with two things, two arguments, two operands. Then we talked about the unary operators. We said unary operators are the ones that they have only one operand. It either comes before or after uh, the operand they're dealing with. Um, and uh, only in C++ we have two, oper two unary operators that come after the operand. Those two operators are called plus plus and minus minus. Other than that, there is no such thing. We said we can overload all these, most of the operators that we have in C++, but some of them we cannot. We'll find out later on what they are. And also, another thing that we need to realize about operators is that for an operator to be overloaded, we need to make sure they exist. They do something, we know what their signature is, what their action is, and if their operands are not defined with the object we want to use them, we can overload it. So you cannot overload plus to do a different thing between two integers. That's impossible because it's already, it, it exists. But if you have an int, a plus between an employee and a salary, you can do that because neither salary nor employee are something that work with plus. And then you can now overload the plus operator. We said we have the power to give any meaning we want to an operator. But because we have this power, it doesn't mean we have to go bananas. We have to actually do the proper overloading that means the thing that the operator is doing. So if plus equal if is the operator we are overloading, it should work in a way that it gets the right operand value, whatever it is, it adds it to the left operand. We should design it that way. Of course, we can make plus equal print stuff and make everything zero. But if I do that, I'm nuts because I'm just confusing the heck out of everyone. So I, you have to make sure the operator you are using actually does what it's supposed to do. Sometimes operators are not really something uh, that is all that common. For example, tilde. The tilde that you put behind the destructor to, the, this, to specify what a destructor is, that's an operator. You can overload it. It's a unary operator. So for that one, you can make it to do essentially anything you want because tilde is nothing out there that does something famous to anything. So because tilde doesn't have any specific thing that it does, you can use it. Or, for example, uh, insertion and extraction operator that you use for print and print out for C in and C out. This insertion and extraction are actually for an operation in C language called left shift and right shift, which we don't know what it is. Too rich for our blood. We're going to learn in three, four, five. But it looks like that it's redirecting something from some direction to another. So if you want to use it for that, fine. It doesn't matter. As long as the operator that you are doing looks like what it's doing is proper, you can overload it. But again, it must exist 
the operator must exist, which means you cannot overload at sign to be an operator because at sign is not an operator in C++. Therefore, you cannot overload it. Overload essentially means I have something, I give it a different meaning. When you don't have it, you cannot do anything with it. So remember that. And that's why when I usually show examples of operation, I put at signs behind it. Uh, if you look at the notes of the other class, and I strongly for operator overload, I ask you to listen to the lectures and look at the notes of the other section. Because uh, uh, depending on how, what, what questions come up in class, different things are, are covered and mentioned that you did not hear in this class. And it's physically impossible to tell everything about anything we have. So I'll kind of start you up, and then from there you have to take over. So that's that one. So we mentioned some operators may have side effects, some may, may not. This is for design. So it's not that you have to do this, but it's uh, the, uh, based on your design, then you have to, which means look at your design and see if your operator is tend to change something. If the operator is changing something, then obviously it's going to have side effects. But if your operator leaves the operands the way they are, then it doesn't have side effect. We gave examples from uh, normal uh, plus and integers to kind of demonstrate what side effects are. And we, for example, this plus doesn't have any side effects on B and C because after it's done, it just returns the sum. Or minus doesn't have any side effects on B and C because the values are left. But plus equal affects the left operand, no effect on the right operand. So these are the things that you have to be careful about. And when you write your program, see if they have side effect or not. We mentioned how to overload operators. And over there, to explain what it is, we said that we should always try to implement so our priority. First priority is to actually set our operator as uh, a member. If we do not, if there is absolutely no way of doing it, then uh, it's okay not to make it a member. But you have to always try to make it a member. And to make it a member, we gave an example like this. We said, if I have class A, let me clarify this. I'm going to write over here A class and I have A class, and I create an A out of it, and I want to overload an operator on purpose. I'm putting at sign over there. It means it's a placeholder for any operator that matches that category. So essentially, I'm saying I have a type C. It could be a class or a primitive. I have a class A, which is definitely a class, and I have a type B that could be a class or a primitive operator. If I want to actually overload this, I'm going to have type C, A class, and operator at, and type B right operand. So the right operand will be the, oper the, the argument the overload accepts. The, this object will be the left operand, and what it returns is type C. But writing something like this, not necessarily is exactly what we want. For example, if I want the, uh, <clears throat> the, the operator that I have, so this one, when, when you look at this, the, the, this function, whatever, like if we call this function foo, if I ask you, can function foo change the A class? The answer is yes, because it's not a constant method. It can change. The, the, the A class. Therefore, it is possible for A over here you ch to change. So when you look at the type of the operator that you have, see the restrictions. If the restrictions are not there, you should assume the change is made. So this has side effect on left operand, which is this. Why? Because it's a method that is not constant. 
So the left operand will change. Does it have side effect on the right operand? It is receiving an argument by value. Because the argument comes in by value, it is impossible to change. So therefore, this does not have side effect on right operand. So no side effect on right operand. Now, if I change that to const and make this one a reference, it becomes the exact opposite. Now, this operator cannot change the A class, therefore the left argument cannot be changed, so this has no side effect on the left, so it has no side effect on left operand, has side effect, but modifies, but, yeah, has side effect, on right operand. Why? Because it's receiving its reference. Are we okay down to here? Confused? Are we confused? Are we confused? It's don't forget that these are nothing. Don't forget that this is nothing but a function. So if I go back to our to our num thingy that we had over here, all right? In this num thingy, because this operator plus is const it cannot change the left one. Because operator not is const, it cannot change the operand. Because plus plus is not const, it will change the operand and so on and so forth. So remember all these. So this is how we enforce it. So if I have a plus equal over here, then I do not. So let's add a plus equal to num. So in num, if I add a plus equal, if I say num, num, and I'm going to return a reference because it's a member I can, operator uh, plus equal, and at right side I'm going to let's say get an integer, so int right operand. Now this one has side effect. Because it is not constant. Because it's not constant, it has side effect. Therefore, I can actually overload it as follows. So I can actually say, I want to add the value of right operand to the value of num. So I'm going to say m value plus equal right operand. And it will change the value of m value. And after it's done, I'm going to return the content of the current object, the target of the current, the target of this, which is uh, the reference of the current object. Now plus equal has side effect and changes num. Okay, going back to operators. So those are the those are with binary operators. Now if it's a non-member, uh, if if it's a binary operator and I want to make it non-member. For example, uh, let me bring these out of here. I'm going to explain it again, and I'm going to go through it. This was our kind of introduction. So I'm going to get rid of it and then explain one by one. Remove this. And display is displaying. Oh, I removed the display. Bad boy I am. Did I? I'm just cleaning everything up and start again. So uh, we kind of review and do it at the same time. OK. That's the operator plus. This is operator plus. This is operator plus equal. There we go. So when we created, like 
if you look, so this one, this one has, uh, uh, has, uh, uh, side of, uh, has side effect on left, no side effect on right. Um, this one has no side effect in left, but has side effect in right. If I want to create the one that I have over here that does not have side effect neither on left nor and right, then the uh, answer will be, the, the type would be as follows, which means it returns type C, it's const. Either this one is const or it's by value, one of these two. If it receives something as value or it's const, it won't change the left one. So this one has no side effect on left or right. Okay, so this is very much suitable for plus operator. If I look at the plus operator, the plus operator here, a question to the back, at the back of the class, uh, can you see this or is it too small? Can you see this? No. Yes? You said no or yes? Thumbs up, are we good? Too small? Oh, okay. Better? All right. All right, so if I want to create a plus operator to do such a thing, so I'm going to come in num over here and remove all these things so we can actually see how things work. So if I have integer a that is 10, and I want to say z is equal to n plus a. <clears throat> Obviously, after this plus, neither a or n should change. Because of that, I have to use this one, which means it's going to receive the right side by value. And it's not going to change the current object. Therefore, that's suitable for it. If I want to create something like this, z is set to, let's say, n plus m. And let's say I have over here equal to, t to I don't know, 100. If I have something like this, where I have two objects, and I do not want none of them to have side effect, because it's not a primitive type, it's better not to pass it by value. We know that. We always pass structures by reference. So to have the exact same effect, what I need to do is to pass the right one with reference, but make it const. So this one will neither have side effect on left or right. And to implement it, this is what I'm going to do. For the first one, we've already done it. It's, oh, we have this one. So, the one that receives a reference takes care of this one. The one that receives by value takes care of this one. Therefore, uh, neither of those have side effects. And the implementation for it is right over here. So the one that receives by value cannot change the right operand. It cannot change the current object. We created the temporary nameless num and returned it. Because I cannot return the current object, it cannot change. So there is no need for it to change. And also plus between two nums, the left one that is this will be num. The right one will be right hand operator. Neither of these can change, and therefore we're going to put uh, m value over here and return it out. Okay? Um, are we good? Any question down to this point? This is kind of a review on what we have done last time. Are we good? Are we okay? One? Are we okay? Two? We're okay? All right. The next thing. So as non-member helper function, when do we need that? A non-member fa function is needed when the left side, left, ar left operand of your operator is either not accessible as a class or 
it is a primitive value, it cannot have a member. So if in my program somebody writes something like this, S is set to A plus Z. If they do something like this, because the left hand cannot have a member, what we need to do over here is to actually create our operator to receive the left one because it's a primitive type as value not to change or actually over here it's a class we don't want that so it's going to be type C this one is going to be type B and this one is going to be C class uh, sorry, A class. So the right side is a class, and to make sure it is not changed, I have to make it a reference and make it a const. Therefore, the left operand is completely passed by value. The right side is passed by uh, constant reference, not changeable, and it builds up. Uh, 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 it returns whatever that is needed. We're going to see what it is. So in our program, it is returning a full num, not a primitive value based on our design. Because of that fact, we have to create a standalone operator that receives the left type. So standalone operator, operator plus, receives the left side by value because it's primitive. So I'm going to put int. Uh, a left operand and it's going to receive the right which is going to be a constant num reference right operand and it is going to return a num2 the problem we had over here was that are we okay are we okay back there? All right. So now I want to actually implement this. To implement this, I need to create, to implement it, I need to create a temporary num in here. The problem is that if I do that, I have to, I can pass the left operand over here, which is fine, plus right operand, but I need to access the m value in here. I can't do that. That's why we create an accessor that we call it value that returns the integer out. Accessor that writes the value that returns the integer out. And we mentioned we can make it as a friend, but we don't like to. We said friends are knife in the back. Remember that? All right. So we're not going to do that. So keep that in mind. And this is going to uh, look nice and okay. So now S will actually work. Let me do the printout thingy. So, so I'm going to do the printout over here. So in here it's going to return uh, C out reference printing uh, the value. That's the display. Okay, so that's that. Now, I have a question. If you write double D, and you want to print that, do I have in here an IO stream? Yes. And if I, print, if I want to print that as an integer, what do you do? You write C out. How do you convert that D to an integer temporarily in C++ or C? Huh? How do you use it? How do you do it? What is the name of temporarily changing the type of something? Typecasting, right? I can, in C, I used to write, in C, I used to write int D, correct? And, and L. And if I do that, you will see that what it's going to print over here will be actually 
Obviously, none of those things are printed. We don't care. We just, the value. It's going to actually only print the integer part. Are we okay with that? Okay. In C++, we do it as follows. Instead of putting it around that, we put it around D over here. The action is the same. It's going to temporarily change the value of double to an integer. And when printing, you're going to have 2, 3, 4, 5 printed. Are we OK with this? Now, believe it or not, this is an operator. It is called a type conversion operator. A type conversion operator's job is to temporarily change the type of an object to something else. Type conversion operator. And it's overloadable, which means if I want to temporarily change the num to an integer value, I can actually write a code for it. How do I do that? It's the exact same thing as you do with the regular operator. If it was plus, you would write operator plus, right? Because it's int, you write operator int. So if I want to actually overload it, all I need to do over here is to say operator int. Now, what does it return? Duh, it's returning int. So I don't need to put a return type for it. Its job is to convert the num to an integer. So there is no need for return. The conversion is the return type. So in here, all I need to do is to do like this. It means it is a type conversion operator. Obviously, it's not going to change the object. And therefore, now I can temporarily change the int to actually change the num to an integer. Temporarily. How? How do I do that? Let's write it. So it's num operator int. All I need to do is to return an integer to accomplish the task. So I'm going to say return m value. Now that I did that, I can actually convert c out int s to n to something. Because that because I've done that, let me just come right to it. When I actually run the program, you will see that it it's actually calls the operator overload the, the type conversion operator overload. So it comes over here. All right. So now it's about to call the int. As soon as I press F11, you see it wants to cast it. First it is, does int have a constructor that accepts S? Of course not. Int is a primitive type. It can't do it, OK? And it, so if it does have it, like if it was num, you didn't need to do that. You can convert the num to an integer because num has a constructor accepting an integer. So the conversion is obvious. It just creates a num. But in this case, because integer does not have a constructor that accepts the s, I can actually overload it. And as soon as this is called, it goes to the type conversion operator and returns the value. Therefore, 310 is printed, which is the value of z, uh, s. Are we OK with this? And you can do this for everything. Like, for example, <clears throat> What if I want to I want something that is uh, uh, nice to, to explain? Pardon me? Sally no, no, I don't want to write a new class. I want to just do it with the num. <clears throat> so I want to write another typecast that is crazy and see how it's going to, but OK. Let's say <clears throat> if num, if num is casted to a C string, I want to show if it's 0 or not, right? It's nuts, something that doesn't make sense at all. Huh? So 
<coughs> when num is converted to a C string, okay, when num is converted to a C string, I want the C string zero or non-zero to come back. Something crazy, okay? So what I'm gonna do over here is this. I'm gonna say, <clears throat> I'm gonna say, take a look. I'm gonna come to num. This is crazy. Uh, uh, you shouldn't do this, but hey, I'm just showing you the response. So I'm gonna say operator. <clears throat> what is a type of uh, uh, a literal value, a string value? It's constant character pointer, right? So I'm gonna say operator const character pointer const. Don't change me. So if it's ever casted to that, I want you to print the value, the whatever. So I'm gonna implement it like this. And I'm going to say, if uh, m value, how do I do it so it's nice? It's a very bad thing, and I'm going to remove it, but I'm going to just show it to you. I'm going to say, because I said don't do two return statements in a function, I'm actually going to put two return statements in a function. I'm just going to show it to you and remove it just to show you it's possible. So I'm going to say return <clears throat> non-zero. Else return zero. Let's see if it's going to work. OK, I've never done something crazy like this. So. Now, if I actually cast the S over here, I'm going to say <clears throat> C out const character pointer S. OK, and I run it. The result is going to be non zero. You see that? So when it comes to that cast, when it comes to this cast, It says, you want to convert to a constant character pointer? Let me see if I have it. Do I have it? Yes, I do. So now in here, it's going to say non-zero and do it like that. And the funny thing is that it is very, uh, um, it, it is done automatically too. Now, I'll tell you what do I mean when I say it is done automatically. Take a look at this. I'm going to say include C string. And it's going to give me that warning thingy. Now in here, I'm going to say uh, character SDR, say 81. You can actually do this. Take a look. I can say uh, SDR copy into SDR N. I can do that. Chair, why? Why can I do that? Because SDR copy receives the constant character pointer as second argument, correct? To copy into SDR. Because N is capable of it doing that, compiler will do it for you. Okay, obviously it's going to give me an error telling me that put that thingy up there. I'm going to say stop. It's going to give me that error about is unsafe thingy. There you go. So let me just put this. Oh. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> okay, I'm going to type it. I don't know why I cannot copy this. Mouse is not that. Copy. So in here, I'm going to say. Define that. <clears throat> now, if I run it one more time, you will see that when it comes to the one that is doing an SDR copy, I'm not going to even print it. <clears throat> when it comes to it, because n can be converted to a constant character pointer, it will be called. And it will be converted, converted, and it's got to be non-zero. Therefore, SDR will be non-zero. Oh, yes. Loud, loud. Yeah, yeah. You could do it like this too. 
When you see it can't be done, do it. Like if it was just character pointed, you could do it. But when it's so many, just, I didn't even, I, quite frankly, I know that it cannot work. But quite frankly, when I see something that I am not sure about, I put parentheses around it. Right? Anyway, so what I'm saying is that any type of type conversion is possible. Okay? So <clears throat> listen to the, watch the, the video later on. I'm going to remove this because this is an awful function. I don't want to write it. That's horrible, horrible function to write. I'm just going to remove I just showed you that it's possible. And please, um, um, <laughs> I'm not going to put it over there. Because it's a bad example. I don't want bad examples on, on my notes. People are going to tell me what the heck is that, right? Because they're not in class. They just see the code and say what's happening. All right, so, so that's type conversion. If you want to do conversion between types, that's what you do. Like, for example, another thing, like I want to, um, yeah, so let me see. So for type conversion, let me put it in here. So we have it. So um, non-member is like that. So type conversion. <clears throat> so if you want a class to be converted to any type, you can always write uh, operator type. So that could be either primitive or non-primitive. Type C and then like that, and it's a member of A class. This means, this means A class can be casted to a type C. Remember, that type C that I made it as an integer, a primitive value integer or constant character pointer, not necessarily needs to be primitive. It could be a regular class. If, and we know that casting in C++ happens, regular casting if it's not overloaded, it happens by a class having a constructor that accepts a type. So you can always cast an integer to a num, because num has an it, a constructor that accepts an integer. That's essentially creating a temporary nameless object. So there is no problem with that. But if the cast doesn't exist, which means either you have a primitive type, or you have a class that doesn't have a constructor that accepts the type that you want to convert, then you can manually do it using the type cast or type conversion operator. Are we okay? All right. So that's that. What else? <clears throat> uh, the unary operators, we've already done it. I'm going to do it again. So, and all these things, remember that everything can be member or non-member but we are dealing with members only at the moment, okay? Like even unary operators, although they only have one class, one operand, therefore they are really suited to uh, be member, you can do them as non-member. I'm not going to teach it now, later, okay? For now, the only non-members you are allowed to create are binary ones. All the operators can be non-member. We are not teaching it yet. Learn to do the correct thing, the right thing, and after you, are, you mastered the overloading, I'll teach you what the bad way is. Okay? But for now, let's only learn the good way. So, for example, if I wanted the tilde to print num, the tilde operator to print num, I could literally have the display over here, where is the display? To be operator tilde. So I'm going to come over here and change the display to operator tilde. Now, if I want to actually display too many parameters. Oh, yeah, because it's a, it's a unary. <laughs> it cannot have the second one. 
So if I wanted to print it, it cannot have the second one because it's a unary operator, okay? And in here it's going to be C out. It's not going to be C out ref anymore, which means this is not an upgradable display because it doesn't have the thing. We'll see, you'll see later on what do I mean by that. Now in here, if I actually want to display, uh, I can actually say uh, C out, uh, not C out, I can actually do this, S and L, okay? So that S of mine is now displaying the S. It's a unary operator. When it gets to it, when I run the program, you will see that the unary operator is called and it goes right in here and it displays the value, as you see, 310, and returns C out to go to new line, which goes to new line, so it works. So uh, operator tilde prints the object. All right? Are we okay? Remember that some operators, like especially type conversions that you create, sometimes work because compiler does cast over cast over cast over cast. For example, if I wanted to see if nums has zero content, it, it has zero in, uh, inside or not, I can simply do this, right? I can say if s, then I'm going to say, S is non-zero. I'm going to say um, tilde S is non-zero. I'm going to say over here else S is zero. Okay, so if I run this program now and I get to this point, because S, S is sitting in a condition, because S is sitting in a condition, what, it's, what the compiler will try to cast it to? Somewhat. No? Loud. A Boolean. Because it's a condition. It's a condition it wants to. Compiler craves a true-false statement over there. Compiler looks at that and says, I want true-false. Looks at it, it's a num. Well, this is nothing to be done. Okay, I can't do this. Can I cast it to anything that I can later on cast it to a Boolean? Yes, I can first cast it to an integer. Then I can cast it to a Boolean. Now I have my value. Then it will do it. So it actually first casts it to, a to, a, to an integer, then gets the integer, casts it to a Boolean. If it's non-zero, it's true. If it's zero, it's false. So that's what it's going to do. So this cast works, but unintentionally. So as you see, it actually returns the value, and 310 is positive. Therefore, it's going to print it as non-zero. But if you don't want to, you can stop it. You can say, hey, if it's Boolean, I want actually the Boolean action to happen. Therefore, you can actually create the typecast for it and say operator bool const. So now, if it's in a situation that it's supposed to be compared as a condition, the Boolean will be called, not the other one. And let's say, I'm going to say, I'm going to change the meaning of Boolean, and I'm going to say it is true if it's positive. I could do that, and it's false if it's not, so I'm going to say return m value being positive. So for me, a number is good if it's positive, it's bad if it's negative. That's the definition of my Boolean. So I can actually change the meaning based on the concept I have. So Say in here, I'm going to have Z as uh, I'm going to actually do something over here so you, so you see something crazy happening. So in here, I'm going to say like this, and I'm going to bring the S again. 
in here I'm going to say S is minus 100. Okay? And you see no error happened. Do I have an assignment operator overloaded? No. But it works. We'll find out how later on. Okay? So now, it comes in here. Let me remove this thing because it keeps giving me warning for it. And now it comes over here. It runs everything, and I want it to stop at this point. So I'm going to run right to that point. Now I overloaded the Boolean. Therefore, it can directly convert it to Boolean. And therefore, it's going to say num greater than 0. Life is beautiful. So it is 310. And it says it's non-zero. OK? I should have said, actually, it's positive. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And negative. OK? And I'm going to run this program, surprisingly. Surprisingly, it actually worked. S is minus 1, minus 10, minus 100. I didn't even overload the assignment operator, and it worked. How? We don't know. We'll find out. But now it goes to Boolean. And because it's minus 100, it's going to return false. And it's going to say it's negative. So forget about that non-zero. It was positive, right? So now the Boolean is working. Can anybody tell me how come this worked without, not, without op uh, overloading the assignment operator? Why? It calls the constructor. We said a casting is create if, you, if it wants the right side to be a number. Because it wants the right side to be a number, it tries to see it can convert an integer to, to uh, a, a num. How can it convert? It can build a temporary one. Can it build a temporary one? Yes, it can. Because it has one. Okay? But if I don't like that, which is very time consuming, create an object, cling an object, I can actually, I can actually create one so that doesn't happen. So I can have num operator equal, and in here I'm going to say const uh, or integer uh, right operand, and I can take over it by doing this. So now the operator is in my hand and I can say m value. The good thing about all these operator overloads is that now you can fiddle around with it and return this. Which means, like for example, if it is an employee and assignment to a double is actually setting the salary of employee. Now I can do validation. If it's negative, I can put it in a safe empty state. So you can take over all the operations that C++ has and make them smart ones. OK? Make smart operators that they take action, set proper things, and they just don't blindly set an uh, 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 do, uh, do an action. They don't blindly perform an action. They actually look to see what is supposed to happen, and then they do it. All right? So that's that. I want to see what is the what is next that I can. Oh, for plus plus, uh, did, did I teach plus plus and uh, how plus plus is not? Should I do that again, like to actually do a plus plus, so it works like integers, like happens like post and pre. We talked about it, right? Um, I'm gonna just do a quick review, do it one more time, so, so we we know it, and then after that I'm gonna overview. Workshop 5. 
uh, and record it separately because Monday is a holiday and we, we cannot, I cannot do an overview for it. So I'm going to actually, you haven't seen it yet, so I'll bring it up so you can actually see it and we're going to have a quick overview for, oh, on it and I'm going to tell you uh, how it's supposed to be done. Okay? So, talking about, so in here I'm going to save it. And also, um, overloading the, overloading the, uh, so it can actually print with C out. I mentioned it, uh, uh, it is in week six, but because you know the concept, it's very simple to know. It works exactly like the one that I told you, like when you actually have something. So when you have, let me just remove all these things. If I want to show the value of a num using C out, just analyze it and see how it works. If you actually, for example, I want to say C out n and I want to print it out. It looks like a tricky thing, but it's not. First of all, you don't have access to C out. Because you don't have access to C out, you cannot make this operator member of C out. That's why you write a helper function. So you just take a look at it. And as you look at it, write the signature for it. First of all, we know it's a helper function because I cannot make it a member. So I'm just going to come at the bottom over here and write it over there. It's operator left shift or insertion operator. OK? Operator left shift for insertion operator. And this operator at left side, because it's non-member, I have to see what I have at left. It's C out. C out is O stream. So I'm going to put an O stream. Reference look, OSDR, whatever. Or left operat. And at right side, I have a number that I want to display. So I'm going to put a constant number reference right operat. And what it returns, obviously, I need to put std over here so I know that this is actually a member of that. What does it return? When this is finished, it should continue its work, which means after this is done, it should return a C out so it can print the end L. So because this has to change to a C out, it means it should return the C out out. And the C out is... O stream, therefore it needs to return a reference of O stream. So in here I have to say uh, std OSDR reference. And that's my operator. And what you do in these operators to actually create them, you always use the display that you have to do it. Because the display is constant, you can always use it. That's why you have to always remember to have your displays at least return O stream and be constant. So you can actually put it through it. So in here, now I can simply say return n, uh, right operand. Uh, sorry, return, um, yeah, tilde. There you go. You can say return tilde right, because that tilde displays it, right? and returns the O stream. So you're saying, if somebody wanted to print me, please call my display. And now N is printed. You want me to change that tilde back to display if you're confused? Anybody wants me to change back that tilde to display? No? We're good? All right, so, so, if, so let's actually run it and see what happens. When I run the program, it comes to C out. It comes to C out. It says, I want to do C out N. N is an object C out doesn't recognize. Therefore, compiler says, 
do I have a helper operator that receives an O stream at left and a number at right? Yes, I do. So it goes to that operator. So it goes to that operator. And it says, I want to call the tilde operator of right operand. And the tilde operator of right operand's job is to return C out and print the value. So it prints the value, as you see, and returns C out. So that return comes back in here and helps end L to get printed. And that's what we have 200 printed. Simple and straightforward. OK? Yes? This one you mean? Yes. Can I do what? Yeah, that left operand does nothing in here. Yeah. It's just for it so conscious. It's just there for the function to be recognized. Okay. So it's absolutely no use for it. Therefore, I wrote something back. I know it's C out. That's why I always say you have to. That was an example, right? So I'm going to actually put the display too. Let me just have the display too. So st. I'm going to add the display and call this one over there. Give me two seconds to make it uh, right. So std o stream display, uh, std o stream reference uh, OSDR set to uh, std c out. OK? So I'm going to have this, and it's a const. So I'm going to have this function and implement it. OK? And in the implementation of this function, what I will do is this. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to actually go return OSDR, uh, and then I'm going to print int this, right? That's essentially what it's supposed to do, print the integer value, correct? And in here, instead of writing this gibberish, I'm going to say display. That, that's better. It's not very awful. So now I can actually write this properly. So instead of writing this garbage over here, I can say write operands display is called receiving the left operand. Now this is an upgradable C out that works perfectly because C out goes through it and the through display. It passes through all the objects, therefore modifications and things can happen to it. You'll, you'll see that later, how it works. Okay? So that's a better display, and if I run it, I'll see that you'll see that it's gonna happen. So what I wanted to talk about over here is this. I wanted to say I want to be able to write C out plus plus N and L and C out N plus plus. And I want this plus plus to actually work like integer, which means it I want it to first print and then re do plus plus. Okay? I want to fake that. So in here, what I will do is this. First let me take all this gibberish out over here because we have only one thing. OK, so I'll overload the operator. It's a unary operator. We know how to overload it. And I'm going to overload both of them. So for the first one, I'm going to return uh, a num operator plus plus. This is not constant. It changes that they are both not constant because they change the value. This is the prefix one. <clears throat> and num reference operator plus plus receives a dummy int just to flag it as postfix. That integer doesn't mean anything. It just means this is postfix. For the prefix, it's pretty simple. I just do uh, m value plus plus, and I'm returning the current object. That's perfectly good and absolutely no problem. But for the second one, 
to be able to fake it and make it look like that plus plus is happening after, what I will do, I will create a copy of the current version of it. Now, comfortably, I'm going to add value to one, to, to add one to the value, and return the old value that is not changed. But this causes problem. Because old is a local variable, I cannot change the reference of it out. Therefore, this cannot be referenced anymore. It has to be a value. Because I cannot return a reference to something that is about to die. OK? So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and save it. So another way of doing it was this. I could actually, to make it less expensive and uh, nicer to be done, was to uh, do value plus plus over here and say return num with m value minus 1. So I'm returning. So that's, again, one of the proper ways of using a constructor. So I'm saying cast the value minus 1 to a number and return that one. So it looks like it's the old value, but it's not. OK? So now if I run the program, I will see that if I run the program, I will see that it runs. For the first one, it prints 200, adds 1, and then prints it. Therefore, 201. This one is going to, in the, it's going to go in here, add 1 to the value, but return a num with the old value. So it's going to print the old value out. It's still 201, and when I print, I see the value is 202. So I fake the post effect of plus plus where actually it doesn't happen. And that's only for plus plus and minus minus and nothing else. Are we okay? Questions? Suggestions? Objections? No? All right. So now I will...